Hey everybody, Dave here from Dave Tries to Fix Stuff, channel dedicated to the repair, restoration, and resurrection of broken stuff. Uh, today's episode, we're going to do something just a little bit different. Um, we are not going to be repairing anything, we're actually going to be modifying. Um, this is a Monoprice model 611705. Um, if you haven't heard of Monoprice, um, we'll get into that a little bit more uh, during the episode as well. Uh, but the overall, uh, I wouldn't say problem, but the thing about this amplifier that kind of bugs me is the overall volume, number one, is not very much. Um, at least it's not as, as loud as it could be or should be uh, based on the fact that it is a 5-watt tube amplifier. I've heard many other 5-watt tube amplifiers, and they're a lot louder than this one. So we're going to see if we can modify a little bit to make it a little bit louder. Uh, in addition, we're going to tweak the tone just a little bit. Um, so if that sounds like something you want to see if I can uh, pull off and accomplish, by all means stick around and uh, we will get to it. All right, now the first thing I want to show you on this is the uh, how loud it is. Um, I know that's really hard to demonstrate normally on a video like this because the condenser mics that are built into these cameras are, you know, they're full of compression and all that, so it's kind of tough to, to determine how loud something is. Um, so that is why I've got this little decibel meter here that I'm kind of set there and I'm going to play it in front of this amp, in front of the, the speaker and the amplifier, and I'm going to crank it, and I'm going to, you know, measure how loud it is. So when we're done with this, Hopefully, we should have a louder max on this than we do now. Um, and keep in mind, when you're, when you're talking about this stuff, about uh, maximum, you know, or how loud a decibel is and all that, usually, I believe, I want to say if, if it's a three decibel difference, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to sound twice as loud if there's a three decibel difference. So it's tough to, to fathom with how the ear actually you know, uh, uh, interprets what it's hearing, interprets sound and, and all that stuff. But, you know, and also I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, because I know that the microphone is built in on this thing, and this is sitting, it, it, I have the microphone on a stand that's attached to the desk I'm working on, so you can hear. I know that comes up as like a on the, on the microphone, so I hopefully it's not going to distort it too bad, but you'll at least get an idea of how loud it is by, by watching the meter. So, let's see. Let's crank this. I'm just going to crank it all the way to 10. So, it had a maximum of 113 decibels right in front of that. So, decibels was the max on that. So we're hoping to get upwards of at least 116 once this is done. And that should, because I really do believe that this thing could be about twice as loud as, as what it is right now. That, that's what we're going to shoot for. Even if it's anything above 113 is going to be an improvement, but that is what we're going to shoot for. So, But uh, aside from that, you know... <laughs> sound too, it doesn't sound bad, and I, and I don't want to make anybody think that I think that this amplifier sounds like shit out of the box. It doesn't. It's, it's a decent little amp. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's just, it, it, it is what it is. It sounds the way it sounds, but I do believe that by making some slight modifications to it, we can make it sound a lot better, and, uh, and we'll be going through why I think we can do that. So, we'll be back with more right after this. 
All right, so I've got the, uh, the, the schematic here. Uh, I drew the schematic up myself. Um, there wasn't a schematic online that I could find. There was a um, there was a diagram that somebody had drawn up, uh, which was basically a, a layout of the PCB that was pr pretty accurate. It had a couple of small errors on it, but it was it was fairly accurate. I, I compared it to what I had on uh, on my actual PCB, and it appeared to be pretty good so but it's still in, in trying to figure out what I'm working with I, I wanted to make a, uh, a schematic because it's just for me it's easier to figure out what changes I want to make to improve the sound so but anyway what we have here what we've ended up with here is a kind of a cross between um, a old Fender Champ like a combination 5E15F1 Fender Champ circuit and also a little bit of a um, an Epiphone Valve Junior kind of thrown in as well and that gives us a pretty good um, basis with which to actually make some some changes to this thing and, and have it really improve the sound so um, the first thing we're going to look at here is the input um, it's not it's a it's not a strange input but it's not what's normally what you'd normally see on an input for this kind of a thing your high that you have actually has the you know the usual kind of 68k um, grid stopping resistor or you know just a, an attenuating resistor with a one meg resistor as a reference to ground that's pretty standard for most um, little amps like this the thing that's different with this though if you look at the low you'll see a couple of things on this this uh, input the first thing you see is that um, obviously you know these things are made to where when you have a uh, jack or a plug put into the jack it separates the tip from this right here which actually sends a signal to ground on both of these that's that's standard as well um, but if you'll notice the other one that's on here where when the plug is put into this jack this separates from this which goes over here to the cathode on the first gain stage and you'll see that you've got what would normally when when nothing's plugged into this low what you've got is just a 2.2k um, biasing resistor and then the uh, bypass cap comes down and when this when there's nothing plugged into this low it will come down and go to ground but when you plug something into the low and not in the high it's going to be sending the signal that from the tip going up here into the same place that the high was going through but you're separating this direct path to ground and now is making it to where this bypass cap has to go through an additional uh, resistor and that basically cuts down the output and lowers the gain on that first gain stage um, why they did it like that I, I don't know I mean that's just it was just their choice normally you've seen things where you'll have two 68k or maybe even 47k resistors on both of the inputs if you plug it into high you're ba basically the two um, you know let me, let me show you real quick I, that one right here. let me put this up real quick so right here where you can see um, this is on a Fender Champ. This is a 5F1 Fender Champ. You'll see right here, so if you plug into the high, which is number two is the high. No, I lied, number, number two is the low. Number one is the high. If you plug into the high, what happens is your signal comes in here and it gets split off right at this point going up to here and through here. So essentially these two 68K resistors are in parallel when nothing is plugged into two and it's only plugged into one. So that brings the overall um, resistance here down to 34k because they're in parallel and then you've got your one meg to ground uh, reference because when it plugs in it separates that out but when you plug into the number two and not into the number one it's going through a 68k so you're getting more resistance there on the signal and then down here you've got a 68k reference to ground it won't go through that one meg because it's going to pick the path of least resistance here which that right there allows that to go to ground 
So you have 68K in, 68K out, so that splits the signal a lot more and gives you a lower input. Whereas if you plug into this one, you only have 34K resistance and a one meg to ground, so it's allowing a lot more of that signal to go through. And that's how uh, most of those old, you know, types of, of um, inputs on those old types of amplifiers worked. Um, usually like on a, on a Valve Junior, it only has one input, so you don't have all this stuff to mess with. But that is uh, nonetheless where we are with this one. So let me adjust this just a bit. My apologies. I don't want to. Okay. So now coming through this first stage, it's going to be going through a 0 0.022 microfarad. Um, I mean, this says 22 NF, but that's the same as a 0 0.022 microfarad um, capacitor going into a one meg res um, potentiometer. It's got a bright cap going across it. And then it's got, for some reason, it's got a 220K here, a, a 220K resistor, a 4.7 nanofarad um, capacitor, and then another 470K to ground reference, which I, that doesn't make sense to me. Let, let's, again, let's, let's compare this back with the 5F1. So you've got, we're just going to say, first of all, when you go back to this first stage, you have a 2.2K resistor here and a 10F, a 10UF um, bypass capacitor, where in the, in the actual champ, you've got just a 1.5K um, bias resistor. Now, on the, this is on the, the 5F1 schematic. If you go back to the 5E1, I believe it's got that 1.5K, but it also has a 25 microfarad bypass capacitor on the FE1. So it's not, um, there's not a whole lot of difference there, but that, that is one of the only changes that was made between the 5E1 and the 5F1. So it's, that's not so out of line. I would probably change that. That might be one of the first things I do though, is I change this 2.2 down to a 1.5. That way it biases this uh, first stage just a little bit hotter and gives me a little bit more gain. Um, that will also in help to increase the volume just a touch. Plus, I, I think the tone will probably sound a little better if it's 1.5. I may simply remove that bypass capacitor. If I do, it essentially eliminates the low input from being low. If, I, if you plug anything in there, it'll just end up being too high. It, it, the, both will be the same input. It won't mean you, you can plug in either one of them, but you won't get a low input on that. Um, but I'm thinking about I'll either do that or I'll change the value on that to a little bit higher of a value. But we'll, we'll see because that is one of the things I've noticed on this is it's kind of, um, I don't want to say it, it just doesn't have a lot of balls to it. It doesn't have very much bass in. It looks like they've kind of shaped the, the, the tone circuit in this to kind of cut out the, the bass in it so that it doesn't, you know, make the speaker too farty. That's my guess on it anyway. But anyway, again... After this and after this, the, the coupling cap and the pot, I don't see the reason for any of this. Again, if you go back to the 5E3, after the pot on that, it just goes straight into the next gain stage, into the grid of the next gain stage. So I don't see a reason to have all of this here. So there's a good chance that I will probably jumper this and this and just remove this and that will really first i think that's really going to add some gain there uh and help with uh in, improving the tone as well in case you haven't guessed my plan is to pretty much turn this circuit into a 5f1 kind of a hybrid 5e1 5f1 champ because uh, i think that'll really help uh, make it sound better um up here i've got this 470p um going in parallel with the 100k on the the b plus I've seen that before, and I've tried to get, I've tried to ask around what the purpose of that is. I, I've never gotten a straight answer as to what benefit that has on the tone. I'm gonna take that out of the circuit and see what how it, you know, what it changes. If it's for the better, great. Um, I'll leave it out, and it'll it'll sound better. I don't think it's necessary. It, I think it was in there for uh, some purpose. I don't know what, but. Um, if it doesn't make any change at all, I'll probably just leave it out anyway because it really doesn't doesn't make a whole lot of difference. 
but I'll probably end up taking that that out. That's C21. I'll probably take that out. Next, we've got the tone stack right here, which is this is kind of reminiscent of those um, those old tone stacks that you'd see like in silver tones or you know like Valco amps or you know um, Dan Electro style amps where they basically just have a you know, uh, value on a capacitor that they can just kind of roll off to ground. Um, what's strange about this one is it's taking not just from the normal signal path here and being able, because that's what it is, you have on one wiper of this pot goes to this, the other wiper goes to this one, and the wiper is actually connected to ground. So the more it goes over to this, to, to the base side, the more treble it's going to bleed off, and then the more it goes over to the treble side, the more bass it's going to bleed off. Um, Nothing wrong with the design per se, but seeing how, again, I think this, this amp kind of lacks balls, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove this R20. Uh, just take it. I mean, I could take remove both of them, but once the R20 is out of there, that 330 is not going to go anywhere. But if I remove that one, then the base um, frequencies that are on here will no longer be getting rolled off um, again I don't know it's weird that they're kind of taking it from I think they're just taking it from here because that way they can have it coming from both ends they're taking it from the uh, cathode but I would rather not have base frequencies rolled off so much if it turns out that that makes it too flabby I'll add it back in or maybe I might add a slightly larger value on that um, but we'll see we'll, we'll see what happens if I take that out of there how, what that sounds like um, and then this 1.5K, now, again, on the Fender Champ, again, they don't have, it goes from the sta gain stage to a coupling cap. You've got the 220 for reference, which we have right there, 220 for reference, and then it goes straight into the grid on the 6V6. This one is more, is kind of like a presence control, which is going to attenuate a little bit of the bottom end of it. It's going to get just a little bit taken off so that it's not you're not getting so much hitting that 6v6 that may or may not be something I play with um, I will I may just try uh, jumpering it with like some clips if I can even get some clips to work um, and if it ends up sounding better without it in there I'll remove it and jumper it if not I may just leave that in there um, the other thing I'm looking at is the 33k resistor right here which is in this negative feedback loop I don't know if you saw that. It's coming down here, negative feedback. There is, I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a hater of negative feedback. I don't think there's anything wrong with negative feedback. It does help to clean up a little bit of the signal. I may or may not leave that in there. That was, that's probably going to be one of the last things that I do as far as uh, the overall, um, as far as the overall tone mods that I'm going to do. I may or may not take that out. I'll do the rest of them and see what it sounds like. And then once I get to that one, I'll try it with or without. I may even just add a switch in there that, you know, puts the 33K in line with a switch. Um, and we'll see what that does. If that makes it to where I can just turn it on and off and I either have it or I don't, great. I could trade it out for like a 50K pot with a 10K in series on a switch and see what that gets me. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, that may or may not be something that I that I actually change. Um, and then, I'm going to lean this forward a little bit. The other thing I'm going to look at is this 100 microfarad filter cap. The other two are 22s. Um, the, I, that, I don't understand the purpose of that. When you look in the um, RCA book for 6V6s, tighten that back up when you look in the RCA book for 6v6s when it talks about because this is going directly to B1 here goes directly to the output transformer which then goes right to the plate um, in the RCA uh, 2 book it says that the largest you should have in this position for filter capacitance is like 20 to 30 microfarads of capacitance so that to me seems more than just a little bit high so there's a good chance that I might lower that to like a 22 or um, maybe even a 33 I don't know I'll see what I have in my 
parts, what kind of parts I have, but that I'll probably lower to 22 just because of the fact that I think 100 microfarad tends to sterilize the sound a little bit, kind of takes a little bit of the character out of the tone when you put that much capacitance in a B plus. So, um, but that's the other thing I'm going to do. And then I've, I'm toying with the idea of, you can see that right there. Eh, back out a little bit, sorry. That right there, that is a what's called a protection resistor, or I guess you, I don't know if that's what it's called, but that's what a lot of people do call it. What that is, is a resistor that is in there because this thing is not just, I, I guess one of the things I left out of the schematic is that this isn't just a, um, this doesn't have just the, the ability to have just the internal speaker used. This also has the ability for an external speaker to be used. Uh, in parallel with this right here is a jack that goes to an external speaker. Now, when you do that, when you have an external speaker plugged in, uh, just like with on the inputs, it will basically separate the connection between the output transformer and the speaker, and it will steal that and send it to the external speaker. The problem is if you plug in a jack, and for some reason the other end of the jack is not plugged into a speaker, um, that is in, in, a, in essence kind of shorting or it's, it's not offering any resistance to the OT on the secondary side, and that's a problem um, because then it doesn't have any resistance to the plates, and your plates can burn up, your diodes could burn up, um, all kinds of fun stuff could happen. So they put this 220 in here um, to maintain a, a load on the OT, regardless of whether this speaker's plugged in or, or another speaker's not plugged in. So no matter what, you've got a load on this, and it makes it so that it doesn't uh, fry your, your tubes or your diodes. Um, one of the side effects with this, though, is that lower end going to the speaker can be rolled off to ground. How much lower end? I don't know. Well, we'd have to play around with it and see, you know, test it to see what it sounds like with or without the, the thing in place. But um, if it doesn't have much of an effect on the tone, I'll, I'll leave it in there because it's nice to have that protection. But if it ends up making it sound worse, like it's taking out too much lower end, I may take that out as well. But that may not. That's also one that's towards the end of the of the whole modification list after the the um, negative feedback. Because I'm hoping with all the other changes that I'm making, that um, this will not. It won't be necessary to take that particular one out. Um, the, you know, hopefully the tone will improve enough just with these other things that I want to do where that's not really going to matter. So, but that is the plan. Um, we will get into taking this thing apart and then um, working on all this and see where it gets us. All right, so let's get going. Okay, so right now I have removed the bypass capacitor for the first gain stage, which is located right there. Um, in its place on the negative side, I put in a little lead, you know, just a, an empty lead sticking out that I could hook this alligator clip onto. And then off of pin eight, which is which was directly connected to the other side of that bypass cap, I did another I did another uh, lead that I have on this alligator clip. And right now I've got the bypass capacitor hooked up, one side of it hooked up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play along with the um, with the amplifier, and then while I'm in the middle of playing it, I will see what sounds better by connecting or disconnecting the bypass capacitor. Let's see if I can get that a little better. Let's see if we can get that in the shot. I don't have a whole lot of room to work with here, but, but anyway, uh, I'm going to turn the amp up. It's really loud right now because obviously this is all exposed. There's nothing really um, keeping it from getting a lot of radio interference and all that. So, but we're going to get a good idea of what it uh, what it sounds like here by by doing that. <laughs> with this thing on. Not gonna lie. It 
it's got a lot more balls with that 10k in there so or that i'm sorry 10k that 10 uf in there <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna try something real quick. Hold on one second. Okay, turn this back on. Alrighty. I took the uh, that little capacitor off, which is right here, this little 10 microfarad. And I hooked up the leads to a decade box. And I want I one of the things I wanted to check was if I changed the 2.2k bias resistor on that first stage to a 1.5 like it is on a uh, on a champ and so doing the math you know the, the where you if you put two um, resistors in parallel is it like the two resistors you, you multiply the two resistors the value of the two resistors together and divide it by the sum of the two resistors added together and that gives you whatever it is. anyway I forget what it but I know the four, a 4.7K um, resistor in parallel with the 2.2K is going to give me like right at 1.5K. So I'm going to play this and I'm going to see what it sounds like, the, what the difference is. Oh, I'm going to change my... Oh, sorry. Had to uh, change my position in my seat here. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to start off with it not hooked up. And uh, as I'm playing, I will do. I will put the uh, the lead back on this and hear what it sounds like, so we can get the, uh, an idea of the difference between a 1.5 and a 2.2k. So. <laughs> that's coming across in the on the video but there's definitely with the, when it's lowered to 1.5 there's definitely more gain in that uh, in the signal uh, it's got a little bit more punch to it as well <laughs> So I, right off the bat, I know I like 1.5 more than I like the 2.2K. Um, so, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually, I'm going to remove that 2.2. I know I'm going to go with at least a, a 1.5K. There might be another value that I like better even than that. But for right now, I'm just going to, I'm going to turn everything back off. I'm going to remove the 2.2K off of the board. It's a little, uh one of those little surface mount ones. And then once I do that, I'll hook all this stuff back up and I'll start running combinations through the, the decade box and uh, we can figure out um, what, uh, what sounds best. So uh, I'll, I'll do that and I'll be right back. So just to give you an idea of, I don't know how many people have dealt with these uh, surface mount components before, but just to give you an idea how tiny they are, that is the tip of my finger right there. So you can see, I mean, that thing would just fit right on my finger. So it's going to be fun trying to get this thing out. I actually, the funny thing is, I actually bought, um, it was only like a dollar twenty, I think. I bought like 10 of these uh, 2.2, not 2.2, 1.5K resistors as this, uh, these uh, surface mount versions. So if I took that 2.2 out and I wanted to change it to 1.5, I'd be able to, you know, easily quote unquote change that out but that's going to be I'm going to have enough trouble just getting that thing out of there much less trying to uh, put another one back in there so I think what I'll end up doing is I'll just use where I have this um, I'll, I'll go right to the pin there and then into that thing for my bias resistor I'll just use a regular standard uh, resistor for that so but I just wanted to show you guys how tiny these things are and how much of a pain in the ass this is probably going to be so alright be right back I just wanted to show you, I'm going to have to be very careful in doing this because if you look at that right there, 
you could see that I actually lifted the trace on that. So, I mean, it's not a big deal because on this particular one, because I, like I said, I'm just going to utilize the other, the leads that I have on here. But if I wanted to reattach something there, which I might want to do on some of these other ones that I'm going to be taking off, I need to be extra careful not to do that. Because if I actually take out those, uh, those leads or the, you know, the little solder pads right there, I mean, I'm not going to have anything to solder to, so that's going to make for a, a bit of a problem. So if you do work with this stuff, be very careful. I think I'm going to actually I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit on my solder gun, or my soldering iron too, so hopefully that'll help. Okay, so I, like I showed, I've got that other resistor uh, taken out. Um, I still have the two leads in there, and I'm going to be utilizing the Decade box um, to get an idea of what different... Um, values will will sound like it uh, for a bias resistor so we will turn this back up again I have it at 1.5 I knew I, I said I liked it better at 1.5 than I did at 2.2 we'll go through them again on this thing and see what sounds better though <laughs> Now I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna lie that the resistors and capacitors in this decade box are, are old. I mean they, they I don't they don't think they've been changed out since this thing was was brand new. So they're all carbon comp resistors. So I'm going to imagine that the values on them have drifted. And usually when carbon comp drifts, it drifts up. So the 1.5 in here is probably a bit higher than that. So it may not even sound right. So I actually went down to 1K and I might even kind of like that better than I than the 1.5 on this, but that 1K might be the 1.5 that I had on the last one. So single coil all right so at this point I had what I have done make sure I don't I'm just going to want to touch this stuff with my hand either. I'm just trying to keep make sure the stuff that I put in here isn't touching anything else. So as of right now, what I have done is I have obviously replaced the bias resistor and the bypass capacitor on the first stage. Um, but you knew that. I also replaced the coupling cap at the uh, going between the first and second stage to a, a little Mallory style cap because uh, I think I'm probably going to change this one too. I'm just I'm not. I need to decide what value I want to put there um, because I may actually depending on how this thing sounds I may be getting too much bass at this point and I might want to pull it back a little bit um, the big changes I made were here let me see if I can get this thing down on that. so on this thing the 220k resistor right here Sorry, I'm trying to get this in the light so you can see it. But the, the 220K resistor right here and the 4.7 nanofarad um, capacitor as well as this 470K reference to ground, those have all been removed. I actually, in removing this 220K, I did the same thing I did when I removed the 2.2K over here and I actually uh, stripped the pad because these things are a big fucking pain in the ass to work with, this SMT stuff. I don't recommend it at all. Um, also, I probably stripped the pad on this 470K, but I don't care because that one was just coming out. So what I ended up having to do is the pots are on a um, separate uh, board, right here, like this little board right here. And they get connected with this little Molex style connector. 
what I did was I actually cut the wiper one, the wire for the wiper, and I just, where I took that 4.7K out that was connected directly to pin 2, I just soldered that directly to the board um, and solved my problem. And the funny thing is, is before when I had this, because this is on right now, I don't have the volume up, but before when I did that, there was all kinds of um, noise and hiss and all that. And, and right now, I mean, the, the volume's down. You don't hear a thing. But even before, when I had the volume done all the way, you still heard that hum. So I'm wondering if there was just those components in there just created antennas for, you know, radio frequencies to come in and and, um, and make their way onto the amp. So, um, so right now I'm going to turn it up and we'll listen to it and see what it sounds like with what I've got in here so far. There's that hum. I'm cranking it again. I can tell right now this is louder. Oh yeah. I will say I on the I need to back it off a little bit. So it doesn't... It's getting a little bit flabby. So, um, I think what I'm going to do, here's what I'm going to do. I, th this, um, I, I don't know how well you can see that. I don't know how zoomed in it is, but I've got, I still have another coupling capacitor here that I want to change out. Um, so, this is a, is a 0 0.022 microfarad. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to, I'm going to cut it out and leave the little lead sticking up so I can use the decade box there to um, see what kind of oh excuse me see what kind of um, values I can get in there what, what sounds the best with with which values so let me get that hooked up and we'll be right back all right um, we're back here uh, and we're back to also having a little bit of noise. I've discovered a, an issue with this that I think I might have to address. Um, the, uh, the bias resistor on the power uh, tube, I don't know if it's the resist. I, I reflowed the solder on already because I noticed it was a problem, but... see it if I leave it on one side if it's, it, it's like it's not you see now right there it, it essentially it's not making contact now it's not uh, but if I push it over now it's, I don't know if it's on the board or it just, it's not, for some reason I need to, it's not uh, getting the uh, bias to ground. So, like I said, I reflowed the solder on the other side. 
I think I'm going to have to see which one it is if it's if the problem lies in the connection between the resistor and the tube and, or between the resistor and ground. But that is something I'm going to have to uh, take care of because it is causing an issue. So. Okay, um, so <laughs> I got, got everything back together and my pilot light isn't working. I don't know if I have, I might have loosened the connections. Uh, wait, oh! The connection in here is loose. I'm going to have to take this apart and I'll get it put back together. I'll make it, I'll get it working. But <clears throat> what I ended up doing was I ended up, I, I still went with the uh, 0 .022 on that, but I went with an orange drop in there just to kind of, you know, between the Mallory and the orange drop, they kind of uh, complement each other pretty well. The other thing I did was I changed out, this was a 220k um, bypass capacitor on the power tube. I actually changed that up for a thousand microfarad and that really would help tighten up the, the bottom end. So what we can do is I'll go ahead and crank it for now. <laughs> single coil. It'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, sustain this has. I doubt it's going to have much. I mean, this is, I basically have turned this into a, um, a chant for the most part. Probably closer to a 5E1 than a 5F1 um, because of the bypass cap that I have on the first stage. But uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it's a shitload louder than it was. So it'll be interesting to see what it sounds like once I get it all buttoned up. But, um, you know, let me get this light fixed. We'll get it buttoned up. I'll go over the changes that I made one more time and then we'll listen to it. Alrighty? I'll be right back. Okay, um, so it's the next next day here. Um, let's um, let's go over to. Let's see here. What we can do as well is we can go over what uh, what changes I made to this thing. So you know, what, actually, let's we can take a pin. Let's see if we can do this. So here on this, I actually changed this thing to a 1.5K. Um, this capacitor, I ended up using a 22 microfarad. Um, this I kept at 22, but I did upgrade it. If I can write. Um, kept the, I kept the uh, bright cap on there. I ended up jumpering this, jumpering this, and I completely removed that. Um, I removed that and I upgraded that. So those two things I upgraded. Um, I wanted, you know, I was thinking about taking, I think I said it earlier, I was thinking about taking this out right here um, only because, like, the way this is set up, I've seen this kind of tone stack if if these two components right here and here were not included in this i've seen it to where you know the the tone i'm sorry the uh, yeah the tone cap will actually be on the wiper with the you know one end down to ground so as it you know as it turns more towards that it rolls more high end off um, but i've never seen it over here hooked up to the cathode of one of the tubes um, 
so I thought in order to kind of, you know, help beef up the, the sound, because the way this is set up, you've always got, as soon as it's anywhere but, you know, completely one way or the other, you've always got at least a little bit of high end or a little bit of bass getting rolled off no matter what. So I thought if I took this one out or this one out and kind of took that out of the circuit, it would just be a high end roll off on that and it would allow a little more bass to go in. But by the time I got over to this point in the circuit, there was there really got to be there got to be plenty of bass. So um, I also still may eventually take this 33k out. I left this in for right now in the negative feedback circuit. I still may take that out um, or put it on a switch. Although I will say at this point, going on record, I fucking hate SMT components. Surface mount technology components suck. They are teeny, teeny, tiny, um, pain in the ass to work with. I, I, I'm lucky I had other ways of connecting the, you know, the, the signal path back into it. Because I, I'll tell you what, if I hadn't had a way of doing that, I would have ruined this board. Uh, so take that for what it's worth. It, it you definitely have the ability to ruin a board on this thing. But um, and then this guy right here, I actually changed out to a 1,000 microfarad, and that really tightened up the the because before I did that, uh, when I was testing it, I, with all after all this stuff, I actually put enough bass in there where it was it was really kind of making the speaker sound a little bit flabby, a little bit farty. And granted, that was with the original Celestian Super 8, so it may have fared better with the new speaker that I put in there. Um, but either way, it, you know, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Um, the other thing I said I was going to change is this 100 UF. I did not do that, but when I go back to revisit this someday, um, that is one of the things I'm going to look at. Only like I said, like I said earlier, is because in the RCA2 book, this shouldn't be more than 30 microfarads. This first one on this first node. So, but at the same time, <clears throat> as of right now, the thing is functioning. It it seems to be working fine. So I really can't. Um, I can't. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Kind of a thing. But if I end up getting hum issues on this, which right now it seems like it's a pretty quiet amp. It's on right now, actually. Um, granted, the volume is a little bit low, but you'll you'll kind of hear how it where it gets to it, uh, in just a minute. But but anyway, that is uh, essentially the uh, the changes I've made in this thing, and I I did leave this uh, this resistor in here as well. That protection re resistor wasn't it? Again, I ended up getting plenty of of bass in this thing. In fact, when I'm playing through a humbucker, it's it's almost too much. I got to kind of really brighten up the tone got to crank the tone knob all the way to the to the bright side to get it to uh to even out so but anywho um It's all on single coil. I'm going to go to the uh, the double now. You can hear. I mean, it sounds very creamy. So if I I need to kind of I'll put the gain up to about three o'clock. Let me crank it. I'll crank the gain now. That's what I'm talking about with that tone control, actually. Um, in the respect that, it, I mean, it, I've got it. If I crank it, it almost sounds kind of uh, like a single coil, almost. I mean, that's really bright. And if I back it off, I mean, just 
a little bit, it, it really can get to that really creamy spot, like overly creamy. So you mean, there's only a real small part there where you've got, got kind of a... So, you know, you got to kind of find that, the spot that, that works for you there. But anyway, let, let's turn it up a little bit. Try to get a little more crunch. I got the, uh, I'll keep the tone where it is, which is just, I've just backed off a little bit from max. And I've got the uh, volume now at, uh, at 12 o'clock. So. got a good go back to the go back to the single coil it's gonna be really bright <laughs> good volume I think for this is with now with the uh, just kind of at uh, at noon where it's just start it just gets into overdrive when you're digging in um, not really distorted just barely overdrive I'll put the volume now up to you can really start to hear the hum now um, but I've got that up to three o'clock now and I'm sure you're really going to hear it, so... humbucker guitar you know where you got single coil or you can do kind of a double coil or you know humbucker style depending on I mean most of the time an amp like this is a very one trick pony and, and for the most part this kind of is but I mean if I had this thing cranked this is not the amp I would use to be playing chords with a humbucker guitar but I can play cranked, I can play chords with a single coil and back off the tone a little bit and it will sound kind of cool just depending on what you're looking to play. Um, and I mean of course that's true with a lot of amps but I'm kind of getting a lot of dynamics out of this. It really is kind of harkening back to a, a like a classic um, Fender Champ. So I'll tell you what, if you can get your hands on one of these things and again you can find these, they don't come in this cabinet anymore um, but you can find them through, um, oh, where did I find them? 
Amazon has them with the, with the new cabinets, and I, admittedly, I said I think I said it before, the new cabinets are not anything to look at. They're they're pretty ugly in my opinion. They look like you know a first act style, you know, cheap. Everybody's got them kind of cabinet. The reason I like this one so much is because of the TV front on it. I thought that looked really cool, but um, but they've got them for a hundred bucks. You know, same exact same uh, cabinet as this. Although I do think instead of I don't think it has dual input. It might have dual inputs. So I'm not sure. Oh, you know what? I should probably try that on the lower input too. It's quite a bit more quiet on that. Um, that's cranked, so that low really does help to kind of tame that, that higher end if you want it. It doesn't sound bad. I might have to play around with that a little bit more on the low. Um, but Amazon has the newer ones. I did see that Sears is selling these right now on their website. Here's the thing. Sears uh, is like $40 more. They're like $140. But the, the photos in there are showing this model, not the, the newer, uglier model. But take that with a grain of salt. If you're going to order something like that, I would call, uh, call and talk to the people at Sears to verify that this is the actual design. Because um, I know Amazon, even for a while, had these pictures on their website and they were selling the other versions. So, uh, But if you like the other version, then hey, more power to you. You can find it for 100 bucks on Amazon. Um, but, you know, do that and, you know, make the, the changes that I, I had here. And you can actually, you know, or fiddle around with it and make whatever changes you want yourself. But I truly believe that this ended up sounding like a very fun little amp that's got some great sound and is a shitload louder now so you know take that for what it's worth but uh other than eventually coming back and maybe fiddling with the negative feedback and that one electrolytic capacitor i was talking about um i'm gonna call this a wild success i'm very happy with how this ended up even though that uh surface mounted shit was a pain in the ass but um anyway um thanks for watching uh, if you like what you see, please hit subscribe, um, or at least do a thumbs up on it, either way. But um, by all means, leave a comment if you like what you saw. If you didn't like what you saw, if you saw I did something wrong, leave a comment. Let me know about it. Just try to be nice. Um, other than that, I will see you next time, and uh, thanks for watching.